In the early mornings, we arrive in our cars, bleary-eyed but steady. The engines cut off almost the instant our old gas guzzlers lurch to a halt, and our doors crack open to shut off the incessant radio. We detest the throb of music, but we can't drive without it. For a few minutes, we wait, with the chilly morning air flowing over our flip-flops. In the mornings, the silicon of my swim cap is tight and the goggles are tighter, but the latter are tinted and shut out the world, so I don't complain. Once I place every bit of stretchy plastic, I have nothing left to do but join the team and swim. The first yards are always the hardest. We work past the pain to get to the numbness. The freshmen analyze. They calculate how they feel and how far they have to go and how long until the end of practice. They know exactly how many yards they can fit into the last hour and how many questions they have to ask to lower that number. They spend much of the practice in pain. The seniors are numb. We think about swimming only when we're hurrying to get to practice. In the pool, we think about college and about boys and homework. Our shoulders know the difference between 100 and 200 yards. Counting is a waste of time. We ponder the water in our ears and rust stains shaped like bobby pins on the bottom of the pool. Sometimes we don't think at all and we let the water have that piece of us. In the mornings, the distant pounding of our hearts banishes the cold from our veins. Swimming has a rhythm. We feel it in our chests. One, two, breathe. One, two, breathe. With each breath, cruel dry air floods our raw throats, tasting of chlorine, filling our lungs and our sinuses with a pungent chemical. One, two, breathe. Our rhythm sustains us until we catch sight of the wall. Without thinking, our heads stuck under and our feet leave the water above us. We strike out against the wall with the soles of our feet. We push ourselves from it. Our shoulders know this first stroke, this new beginning, and then our exhausted lungs fill once again with the cruel air they crave. One, two, breathe. When we leave the wall, we carry with us all the numbness of the last lap and a new momentum, which we preserve for only a little while. One, two, breathe. And then it leaves us as our grasping hands begin to slip through the water, letting it rush through our fingers over our wrinkled palms. We grab forward, but we are climbing a ladder with rungs of smoke. One, two, breathe. One, two, breathe. In the mornings, the wall appears every 25 yards, just in time to save us from surrender. The wall will appear, reliable as the numbness, and with each turn we move farther from the pain of the start. As the sun rises and vanishes the blackness, we start counting again, counting the laps until our reluctant shoulders will pull us from the water, as if we are leaving it behind. But we can never really leave the water behind. The chlorine will remain on us, and the water, it will remain in us. Even as the water returns to placidity, and we leave behind new crumbs, even as the pool forgets, we will never be able to forget. We may be gone from it, but it will never be gone from us.